instead of telling you you need to do more exercises you need to avoid similar mistakes i would tell you what is the right way to do exercises and how you can avoid the simple mistakes i will also share many more tips that i find really helpful for a slow learner like me if you don't have a strong basic in maths and you don't know how to begin answering the question and the most serious thing you don't know what you should do now then this video is for you so what dika and hi everyone i'm lilik i scored 9 a's in pt3 and 10 a's in spm currently i'm a sponsored student studying in a college in malaysia i actually received some dms on ig and also comments on my previous videos asking the mathematics tips how did i score an a plus for maths but at that time, I was struggling with maths in my college. I was super afraid that I would share the wrong tips to y'all. So I tried my best to improve myself first, plan back all the strategies to get a better grade in mathematics, and waited until the result come out. And last week, I got my result, and it was pretty good. I think I am ready to share to you guys what I did and how did I score an A plus for maths in ASPM. Here are the things that I will cover today. Just skip to the part that you are interested in. So the first tip is how to make a good note for maths. A good note must be concise, organized and structured. Make your notes according to the subtopic so that you can understand each subtopic better. In each subtopic, you must include two things. The first thing is the formula and the second thing is the example of the questions and step-by-step -step solution. For the formula, you can just copy down from your textbook and add some of the information like when you have to use it and what are the conditions for this formula. For the example of questions and step-by-step -step solution, you can use the questions that your teacher gave in your class from textbook or difficult questions that you found on YouTube. But the key here is we do not want our note to be super long and it needs to be organized. So make sure you just take few questions of different types. What I meant by different type of questions are the questions that you will need to use different formula, different work solution or different method. My biggest problem in maths is when I look at a question I don't know how to start, I just stare at the question. That is why I did this kind of step-by-step -step solutions for myself because I know I'm a slow learner. So write the work solutions as detailed as possible from step one until the end. Tip number two, I have been repeating this so many times in my previous video but I will still do so. When you finish doing your notes, you need to do topical questions. I highly suggest you to do past year questions that have been compiled topically. When you do these topical questions, there will be some questions that you did wrong or you couldn't get the right answers. Please don't erase the wrong workings. Instead, write down why this method is not applicable, why you cannot use this method, and then you can copy down the correct workings using different colored pen. If you don't do like this, you will definitely repeat your mistakes when you have this kind of similar questions in the future. It also acts like a reminder for you before an examination so that you don't repeat it in your actual exam. Okay, tip number three is for slow learners. To the fast learners, skip this tip. Okay, just kidding. So. If you are a slow learner like me, I would suggest you to do the exercises from the course book or the textbook first before you move to the past year questions. This is also applicable to those who do not have a strong basic in maths. Textbook questions are arranged according to the difficulty level. So you will start with the easiest questions first, which can increase your confidence and at the same time strengthen your basic. Knowing that I am a very forgetful person, I will not skip the workings, you know what I meant by the step-by-step -step solution earlier. So I will not skip these step-by-step solutions very quickly. When I do questions, I will have level 1 and level 2 for myself. For level 1, I just aim to master the concept, to know which formula to use and consistently use the same step for every question so that they will stick in our mind. So for this first level, I don't care about time restrictions, how fast I can solve one question. All I know is to make sure I understand how to approach each of every questions properly. 
If I am confident enough, I can get the right answers for all the questions I did, then I will move to level 2. In level 2, I focus on solving questions faster. So I will skip some basic steps that won't give me any marks. Level 2 will allow you to be exposed to more difficult questions because when you do faster, you will be able to do more questions and from there, you will come across a lot of difficult and more challenging questions. Tip number 4. What books to use or to buy? The first one is of course your textbook. You need your textbook for the notes and you can try out the questions. The second one, you'll need topical exercise book or past your topical questions. Whatever books that you buy, please make sure that you know where to get the full workings, full work solutions, not only the answers. Therefore, you don't have to waste a lot of time thinking how to get the answers when you stuck at any questions. You will also be provided with different methods in solving any questions that you have. Some of you guys told me that you guys couldn't find the past year topical books, the past year topical questions. So my advice would be you go and find these topical questions online. Just google them SPM topical questions. I'll put the link in the description box below. In my next video, I'm going to give you free BM notes again. But this time, I have compiled you all the good sentences according to the theme which can undoubtedly help you to get an A plus for BM. So if you want to get this note, feel free to subscribe, turn on the notification bell and set it to all so that you won't miss it. Tip number 5. How to not lose marks in exam. If you do all the workings and give examiners everything they want but you get the wrong answer, then you will probably lose 1 marks, 2 marks. But if you skip all the important steps and get the wrong answer, then you lose all the marks. What I am trying to tell you here is that your workings is more important than your answers. As long as you use the correct methods, the correct formula, you won't get 0 marks. So when you do questions, it is very important for you to check the marking scheme which part of the working is awarded with how many marks. Once you know this, every time you do the questions, please don't skip that part. Knowing that working is very important, during the exam, please don't erase your workings or cross out the workings that you could not get the answer. If you don't know how to do the questions, you can try to use the formula related to the topic and plug the numbers in. Moving on to the tip number 6, what you need to do one day before the exam. For that, you need to understand there are two types of mistake. The first type is lack of knowledge. This is where you don't know how to do the questions, you don't know what formula to use. The second one is careless mistake. One day before the exam, we need to focus more on the careless mistake than the lack of knowledge mistake. Because one day before the exam, we do not want to add more knowledge into our brain. Too much cramming at the last minute will lead you to panic, anxiety and stress. We do not want that to happen. So one day before the examinations, after you have revised all your notes, look back all the mistakes that you have done. It is better for you to write down everything in a paper, what to remember and what to avoid. As a result, you won't repeat the same mistake in your exam. Before I move to the next tip, I would be very happy if you can suggest what videos you want me to make. Comment down below, I'll be sure to reply you. Tip number 7, what you should do during the exam. During the exam, just make sure you answer the questions calmly and confidently. Do not let the difficult questions to affect your confidence. When you stumble upon a tricky question where you spend more than 2 minutes on that question but you still have no idea how to start, what I can tell you is leave it first. In exam, we will have routine questions and non-routine questions. Routine questions are the questions that you have done quite a number of times. These questions normally came out in the past years, in your textbooks, or even in your topical exercises book. But non-routine questions is the question that requires some degree of creativity and originality to solve it. This question has not come out before and you need to have additional knowledge to answer it. So during your exam, do not think too much. For the first round, just settle all the routine questions. Do not worry about the non-routine question first. We leave it for the second round. So it's kind of like warming up your brain. You solve all the easy questions first, followed by the more challenging ones. Tip number 8 and also our last tip for today. I might have not mentioned this before in my previous videos, 
But today, I feel like I want to deliver this short message to y'all. So tip number eight is about keeping a strong mindset. I just want to tell you that if your current grade is not good enough, please don't assume that you are dumb, you are not smart, and you are going to stick with the same grade until the end of your life. Do not compare yourself with other people because this is your study journey. It's about your development. There's nothing to do with other people's achievement. When it comes to success, your current position does not matter. It's about how you think, how you look at the situation, and continuously seek to improve yourself by trying out different methods. To those who stay until the last, I truly appreciate your patience and your support. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to share it to your friends and family members. Subscribe and turn the notification bell, set it to all if you want to watch more videos like this, SPM study tips and also scholarship information. To my 1.35k subscribers, sending all my love to you.